so make a video about why you are hard stuck. This is more so for lower ranked player, but players, but of course even higher ranked players can learn out of it, right? Now um, I will talk about some low elo issues, like at least ten things of why you are hard stuck in silver, for example. Uh, this is a jungle edition. Probably I will make a bot lane, top lane, mid lane edition later on if 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 you guys ask for it. Now let's start the video up like this, right? So, first of all, one of the things that lower rank people almost never know, like I've been coaching so many lower rank people, I've been watching a lot of lower rank people, I have lower rank friends that I played with, right? And close to never they knew how to do the PvE part of the jungle, close to never they knew how to um, how to full clear decently before the Skrattel Scarf spawns at the, at the best timer, right? For example, for every type of clear, there is, um, there is uh, some type of... Um, there is some type of YouTube video how to do it correctly, right? For example, this clear is 319, right? Uh, and it's a full clear, right? Which means if you get leashed from both sides, you can full clear before Scuttle Scrum spawns, right? But if you don't know that you can full clear with Randall, you're gonna be always uh, level 3 at the Scuttle Scrum. Because, you know, there is a world where everybody plays passively enough, everybody wards, everybody is aware of the map, and you have bad gang, bad gang setups from your teammates, they have really good escapes, so it's so difficult to ever get the gang done, right? Then maybe we want to stick to the to the full clear pattern, right? Now, there isn't like a game where you have like a straight up, like, I full clear every game, I level 3 gank every game, I invade every game. Every game is really different depending on the situation, because there are so many scenarios you can get in, you always have to judge it from your own uh, perspective, right? Like, if you wanna invade, you definitely need prios from your teammates, right? You need to know how the enemy jungler clear, where he starts out, right? So, you should definitely have a game plan, right? So this is like another thing. People don't really have a good game plan of, of where do I gank, where do I path towards. Uh, when when somebody tries to level 3 gank a lane, level 2 gank, whatever, uh, they don't consider what kind of escapes that they have, or if the if the enemy mid laner, let's say, can set up a gank. And often they just, they just go aimlessly without thinking of those abilities, right? That's like one other thing, so it's really important to watch a clear on YouTube first, practice tool it and template. The other thing is moving your camera, Let's right? People yeah, almost never move their camera in lower ranks, now let's be real. Even when they have enough space, for example you took red down, right? You took Krugs, right? In here you have like a small space to look on mid lane really quick, with either by moving your camera or using the F keys. Um, also when you will have more space you take, you take the Krugs, right? then you have a really big space to look on uh, mid lane, bot lane and even top lane, right? And you can consider, maybe I want to level 3 gank mid, ideally mid lane, but there is a world where you level 3 gank bot, right? Or you might just wanna like uh, gank at, at 3 top lane after clearing some camps, right? Now Nuno is more so a level 3 oriented jungler, right? But not every, not every time you will be able to level 3 gank, right? Um, so moving your camera is important from many points of view because it's really important to know. For example, your laner is here. Right? The enemy, let's say this is the en an enemy LeBlanc, right? You don't see, if you don't move your camera right quickly enough, you don't see if her W goes on cooldown. Her W has 18 seconds cooldown, by the way. Which means that uh, if you move your camera, you can see she uses her W offensively, right? And it's really easy to gank her, but if she has her W up, it's, it's so hard to gank her, right? It's almost impossible. So this is, like, ability cooldowns are really important as well to watch out for, because I see LeBlanc use her W, good, I'm gonna charge up my snowball, I'm gonna gank that guy, because he has no escapes besides flash, right? So the only way he maybe escapes is by flashing, right? It's like, at, at max, the best way he escapes, right? But even then I can possibly connect my W, right? If, if I can, if, if she doesn't flash is correctly, right? Um, okay, now let's let's talk about other aspects of the game. For example, what lots of times I've seen from like lower ranked uh, players, right? Uh, for example, you kill the enemy jungler, right? You kill the enemy jungler, this is just for visualization. And what often people do, they don't take an aggressive route, they, they don't try to dive mid lane, they don't try to dive top lane. Uh, they choose to play passively, in fact, they, what they do usually, they take their own camps instead of the enemy camps when, like, the enemy jungler is dead, right? They don't choose to take their, uh, their camps down, right? 
They don't take, choose to take these raptors, these red if it's up or cracks, right? They rather go back and play passively and, and they don't recognize when to when to steal camps, right? Because there's definitely place to place and time to steal camps. Now of course sometimes it can be risky, for example, if you're low HP, they have a talon mid, then maybe he rotates on you or the top laner is missing, mid laner is missing. So if you don't have good escapes on your champion, then there is some level of risk and it, it's not like always you should do it. But uh, you should definitely consider it, aside of that in lower ranks, uh, the mid laner and the top laner almost never rotates if the enemy jungler invades uh, the enemy enemy monsters, because more than often they don't even know that you're stealing those things, right? Now, what other aspects should we talk about? Now, often it comes to itemization, right, and runes, right, where you can, where a lot of junglers fall off. So often, quite often people are building quite incorrect items, not looking at the situations they are currently in and they don't recognize which build would most likely win me the game. For example, there are some junglers that have like multiple type of builds, but there are some junglers that are really one-sided. For example, Sin Zhao can mostly go Gore Drinker, right? But for example, on Jarvan, you can also go Gore Drinker, but you can go Turbo Camp Tank with Zanya too, right? There are definitely, like, on some junglers you have more options. On some junglers, it's most likely there is like one Mythic you can rush, right? And it's definitely good to know when and what to get, right? For example, say, you can go like two ways on some champions, you can go crit or lethality, or Shivana. Shivana is a really good example by the way, right? Shivana is actually one of the best examples, because her builds are really versatile and that's why you gotta like Google up. Now, I won't talk about too much about her builds, but you gotta Google up, search up on YouTube what to build and when, because what you build is, uh, it, it, it can really determine the game, because on Shivana there are so many builds, it's unreal. I seen a challenger player explaining. Uh, if anybody wants the guide, I can post the link, right? Explaining um, how many builds are on Shivana, and there are like 3-4 correct builds that he plays in Challenger around 1000 LP, right? Which means you should play it in your Silver games as well. There's like a tank build, if your team needs a tank, right? Frontline tank, there is the AP build, right? And there is the AD build as well, of course, right? Each of them you can get it situationally depending what your team requires or what's good against the enemy team, right? For example, if they have a lot of AP counters and you're al your team already has one or two AP champions, then maybe you don't want to go full AP, maybe you just want to go for an AD build. For example, they have a Kassadin that's building an MR, uh, or maybe they have a Galleon mid or what they had to have, they, maybe they have like already in tier kit magic resist and they are willing to build magic resist as well, then definitely you can go for a Blade of the Ruin King build, right? Then again, the AP build, if your team has like 0 AP, then you're gonna be in such a good spot with Shivana because you just, they won't build much MR, trust me. Like, if there is one AP champion, they will mostly try to focus out the other champions. So if you ever get ahead on the curve, you will basically just one shot or wipe their HP in no time with your E. So that will allow you to, um, that will allow you really easily to go for uh, uh, a better build in the game, right? Now, uh, what other subjects do we have here in, in here to talk? I already talked about like five things, right? Around like five things, I suppose. Um, aside of that, like probably one of the basic things as well. Maybe I should do it from the start of the video, right? So most of the junglers, they start out from bot lane, right? And this can be quite incorrect because they get double leash and their thought process is because they get double leash, they should start from the bot side of the map. But usually you start wherever you are patting towards to, to, to the lanes, right? You're not really like starting wherever you get double leash from aside of that. Sometimes you want to start from a particular area so you don't get invaded. For example, on Kartus you don't want to start from bot lane because it's easier to get uh, or like you generally need blue to clear, right? And you don't really want to start from both sides of the map because it's easier to invade Kartus at, at the blue and chrome, right? So that's, this is a thing you definitely want to avoid, that's like a really good thing to consider. Side of that, there are other like beginner mistakes such as never buying control wards, right? As a jungler you're roaming through the whole map. You're not getting oracle either, so you're usually your first step is you leave a ward, you recal, right? You time your recal of course, and you get you get oracle lands. Now, you don't have to get the control ward, <laughs> you probably won't have money for it, right? I just brought it. Uh, on some champions you can also go health potion and the control ward, right? Because some champions have insane sustain like Wally Bear and it's really good to recognize when your champion doesn't need healed potions in the jungle, right? Now aside of that, where do you wanna use your wards? Often you wanna wa use them in here. Now what's the reason to use your ward in here, right? It means we are covering mid lane. 
we are covering mid lane from uh, a possible bot lane gank, right? Because uh, the enemy Pike, the enemy Alistar can't really gank from this way because it's warded, so he will be spotted, so our, our mid laner doesn't die. Maybe Hecarim comes from this area, right? Um, then he wants to gank mid lane, but whoops, the en <laughs> your mid laner already noticed the enemy jungler, so they don't get a kill. This is good to deny early kills, spot the enemy support, the enemy jungler, generally speaking. Sometimes even the AD Kelly will long, but that's like really rare to happen, right? That's really rare to actually happen, right? Um, Alright, now there are other aspects as well, such as more than often you should aim to take Herald over Drakes, right? And there is like another thing about Heralds, people don't know where to pull it correctly, so for example when people blast spawn over from this side, they usually gonna attack the Herald from behind, and it will put a, like for example if you're, if you're in my team, and you just blast spawn over from this side, you don't wanna auto attack the Herald from in here, because you wanna pull the Herald outwards, it's easier to pull the Herald outwards when he dashes forward, right, because if the Herald is here it's easier for the enemy jungler to smite, and then steal it, right? It's easier to contest when they see its spot, when they see its HP, right? When they ward over. But if they don't see its HP, they don't exactly know what to do. Right? That's another thing. And of course is uh, how to use use Herald correctly, right? I gotta try it kill too quickly, right? So what what usually bothers me in lower lower ranks what people do, right? So for example, people are usually gonna Herald the tower at full HP. Now this tower is not full HP, but more than often what happens, people are heralding it correctly because here's the thing, if you don't use the herald to execute, then the tower gonna get a lot of armor, right? But for example, if you take the tower's HP down to half, right ar around two, 2300, the herald will execute it and the plates don't stack up because the, here is the thing, so even if the, so some plates gonna stack up of course because you take two plates down, right? But the Herald deals through damage and he doesn't care about the armor stacking of the tower, right? So you should use it at 2300 HP always, right? Alright. Now what else should we talk about? There are invade patterns that you should avoid. For example, some junglers say like Kindred, for example, they often like to uh, level 2 gank somebody at the Grump. For example, you start from blue side, you get a weak leash and he, she gets a strong leash, right? And more than often you need to skip Grom to avoid a level 2 gank on yourself, right? Yeah. Now one way to avoid it as well, of course, to ward this area so we spot her, but you still... It's, it, she will most likely just oracle it and lose some of her tempo, so that's like the thing you can of course do as well, you can also ward the Drake Pit. Because likely in Red 1-3 is gonna do this. Now... What else should we talk about? I mean, there are so many aspects of the jungle to talk about, right? Now there is like one other thing as well which is really important from my opinion, so this is what mostly people are doing. I don't like, I really dislike that people are really trying to force ganks uh, almost every time from this side of the map or this side, so they are ganking from these two sides, right? And often your champion is not too good at ganking from these sides, right? Uh, because if you play Rengar, it's really hard to gank from these bushes, that Rengar is just an example of course, uh, but here's the thing, like, more than often these bushes are warded, this is bushes warded, this, the river could be warded, this is warded as well, right? There's so many bushes could be warded, and out of two people, like, I do believe at least one person brought the control ward, at least one person is aware of the enemy jungler, at least uh, one person normal warded, so it's really hard to gank eventually, right? It, it gets really difficult to... Let's get this enemy out of the way. God damn, she doesn't die. Man, man, Annie doesn't die. Now, of course, you can like gank from this side of the map. That's completely fine as well. If the enemy champions are really deep in lane, for example, they are something like this, right? Then you can definitely get a uh, gank angle with Nunu, right? With Nunu it's really easy to gank them. Um, but for example with other champions it might be a bit more difficult depending on their escapes and their gank setups of your own teammates. So often what you wanna do... Let's remove these dummies really quick. Um, remove dummies, right? right. So often you wanna gank from this area now, with Nunu it's not necessary, Nunu is a different champion because his ganks are really insane with his snowball stun and speed, right? But for example, say you play a Jarvan, you play a Kha'Zix, you play whatever, right? How you wanna initiate, you start with Oracle, right, to see if any of these bushes are warden, and you need to play around minion vision. So in here the minions don't see me, I sneak into the bush, right? And more than often bot laners won't expect you 
to appear from from a bush, from a bot lane bush. So if, say if I'm Kha'Zix, Echo, whatever I play, it doesn't matter. Let's say I play Echo, but it, it doesn't matter too much which which champion do you play. It's not really champion specific, right? Um, they won't really expect you. They won't really expect you to generally just to jump out as Zek, as Kha'Zix, as whatever, out of this bush and gank them because almost, people almost never do this in lower ranks, so it will be so unexpected as well, that's that's the thing about it. And people ne don't really ward bushes, I mean sometimes people in lower ranks base their wards in bushes. You can of course start out with Oracle to see if it's warded of course, or even your jung even your support can take out those wards, and probably they won't suspect you being around, right? So that's like another thing to definitely consider. Um, Okay. Now we talked about itemizations, your rooms are really important, best if you check up on your own internet what to build if, or you can also give your own thought process to, to it, like what you should build, what do you value this game, what, what's gonna win you the game most likely, right? There are like a lot of things to definitely consider. I think this will be my guide on how to unstuck yourself. <laughs> from lower ranks, I don't even know how many like things did I even talk about, how many subjects, probably like 10, around 10. Um, so yeah, this is the end of the video, um, see you guys for the next one. Goodbye.